Welcome to the Rebel Love Show. We are a once a week broadcast from Manchester, New Hampshire, where we are pro pot, pro gun, and pro coffee. We are syndicated on Voluntary Virtues Network. We're also on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, and of course, RebelLoveShow.com. I am Rob Mathias. And I am Shire Dude. And today we have two phenomenal guests, two also first time recurring guests at the same time so it's kind of like a, a double dipping on this episode uh first from recently from the uh keen spiritual retreat none other than rich paul yay and then we also have the artist currently known as oh girl lauren the beautiful rumpler you always give me so much crap. <laughs> I <give> you <laughs> <laughs> That's because I know who you are. <laughs> right off you the bat, just stirring <laughs> the pot. Yeah. <laughs> We're bad. Well, you get, to, you get to lick the spoon if you stir the pot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, this past week has been a crazy, crazy week. Um, me personally, obviously, but... Uh, yeah, Keenvention. All of us here. Oh, I know. It's yeah. been a crazy it's, week for it's, every. It's been insane. Every person in this group. Uh, I, I don't know I, about I Rich Paul. Yeah, but I don't know about Rich, but like I, I've involved, yeah. I've evolved as a human being in the last week more than I ever thought I could. It's like been a I crazy keep, week. I keep going farther and farther down the rabbit hole. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, Keenvention. Uh, there was the statewide elections where like what fifteen free staters got into the state house. I heard uh, it was 46, but go on. 46? Maybe it was five. You know what? It, next year, it's just wow. going to be all no, of them. I think It's just going to be all free staters in I every single state house. I think that was the house. number of people who were originally, like, won the primary was I, 46. I think it was the number of people who were giving false numbers. Yeah, that sounds accurate. Oh, yeah. Hmm. yeah. That sounds accurate. Let's, just, just, let's, <laughs> just, let's <laughs> just tell the like yeah. all the statists that we have, like, 50 free staters in there and let them figure it out it on does, their own. It doesn't really matter, I mean, mm. because we should just get rid of the government anyway. Uh, I don't oh, know why we haven't yeah, seceded well, okay. yet. Well, how are we going to secede from the union if there is no state government to secede from the union with? Because we just don't pay attention to them anymore. It we was, just I dissolve would say the government. Because those are two separate. Yeah, we dissolve the areas. government and we start living as free people. And if they w- have a problem I'm with not, it, I'm they not can against they that. can come over here and, you know, deal with it. But I just want that to happen after we secede. It was pointed out um, online. I'm I'm pretty much there with you on that in that you know, you really do need the state government to secede from the federal government. Yeah, because you know, the there's f- no other body that could issue such a document. And I see secession as a separate issue from abolition. I, I, I argue for both abolition well, and secession, but they're two separate things. If we get secession first, that's all good. Yeah. Well, I mean, don't get me wrong. I believe all of us at this table are abolitionists. I mean, I consider myself a modern-day abolitionist. Mm. Um, but uh, getting rid of the master that has uh, 80% control over my life is a lot better than, you know. I mean, do, I'll put my minarchist cap on for just a second. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Shire, do you, do you hear him speaking for you? What? He believes that everybody at this table is an abolitionist. Are you trying to say he's that he's labeling you, Shire dude? <laughs> well, to say that somebody is something is to say that they it's descriptive. It says that they meet the definition of this thing. And if I am going to say I think there should be no government, then I can't complain when people label me as an anarchist because that's exactly what I've proven myself to be. Some people prove themselves to be anarchists. Some people prove themselves to be assholes. You know, and if you prove yourself to be an asshole, people will label you an asshole. And that's also descriptive. It's it's important to be able to communicate about people. And that requires labels and descriptions. Well, if Shire Dude wants to uh, uh, come out of the closet as being pro slavery, he's more than welcome to on this show. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to stop. I him was from just doing saying it. that he doesn't like labels. What I'm, do you think? Here? I'm just not going to wear a T-shirt that says abolitionist on it. Okay. All right. Cool. Um, Well, I mean, y'all can do whatever you want with the state government. I'm just going to continue living my life as a free person. As you should. So, you know, y'all do your thing with the state government stuff. Okay. So anyways, uh, Keenvention, the elections and an amazing new movers party, like all in one week. So that's kind of like there's about 50 porks at that new movers party, which was amazing. I was so upset. I only got to show up for maybe 15 minutes to say hi to 
to some people that I care about. And then um, yes, I you had did. To, I didn't even get to talk to any of the other people. I just got to talk to my close people. And then I had to run out the door. It, it really sucked because, like, all the people that I really cared about and loved were there. And it, like, it just sucked. There were a lot of loving See, I thought you were party. a relationship anarchist now. I, I've been a relationship anarchist for about a year now. So doesn't relationship anarchy say that you're to uh, value all of your relationships equally? Oh, yes. but It just so happens most of those just, people are in the one, one yeah. room together. M- most, well, yeah. It was, uh, the other, it was the other people that I'm just, you know, I don't really have relationships with. I mean, there are people that I see sometimes, but, I mean, I wouldn't say that we even really have a friendship. I mean, they're not really one of my ambiguous sweeties, so. Yeah. Yeah. Anywho, um, let's talk about convention for a bit because all of us here have played a role at convention. Uh, I, I was, I part, part, what, what are you laughing at? <laughs> the way that he's spending apps. Uh, right. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> anyways, a- a- Ash is, a- Ash is also full poly, by the way. Um, she is. She is. Yeah. She she she, she gets it on with everyone. For she, you, yeah. For she you, she loves audio. more people than any poly person I have ever met. For you, yeah. audio only listeners, Ash is like all over me right now, and it's, yeah, it's something special. Yeah. 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 You sharing some special love? Yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, I was I was I involved. was in a jail with a guy who screwed his dog. <laughs> 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 and rich for the win, <laughs> the big win. <laughs> was he a j- <laughs> Say my name. <laughs> oh, man. I didn't know bestiality oh, would get a cheers rich. on the Rebel Love Show. Oh, I didn't think so either. Wow, well, I didn't see that coming. Bestiality. Either. Cheers, everyone. <laughs> oh, All right. Whenever right. Rich Paul mentions to, bestiality, to the we big, got a drink. To the big win, <laughs> Rich Paul just gave the Rebel Love Show. <laughs> All right. Um, but yeah, convention. Um, I had two panels, Secession and Direct Action. Uh, Shire Dude here did the new movers panel. Uh, Lauren, you did uh, the ladies panel, correct? The sexist panel. The sexist panel, yeah. correct. I'm sorry, I misspoke. It actually ended up being a great panel, though. We um, we talked about, um, about pay equality and um, also about um, feminism. And it was really nice. To have four women there that were against both things, and are also all sexist. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 It, w- it was a good thing to point out all the sexist women in the movement <laughs> at wow. one time. Wow, Rob. Yeah, you're not getting a date anytime soon. Oh come on. You know. You being know, mean I offered. Be mean I to offered. the prettiest ladies. No, 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 I mean, no. I had the prettiest ladies you and all like the, all, all the Free State did. Project on on that panel. You know, I. Oh my God. I, I, well, I oh have a suggestion God. for those who demand. I mean, other pay. than other than Stephanie Murphy, she wasn't on my panel. She should have been. Oh, I know. Anyway, my pay. my quick suggestion for people who want equal pay is think about this: for every one woman I encountered in jail, I encountered five men. There are five men in jail for every one woman in jail. Therefore, the system is obviously slanted toward women, and we should remedy that by multiplying all female sentences by five so that the two genders get the same outcomes. Now, if this sounds absurd to you, I'm glad because it is. And that (laughs) is more or less the logic that the uh, advocates of so-called equal pay are... Uh, are arguing for and the reality is most of the women that I know are not as aggressive as most of the men I know so it is not surprising to me that men tend to make more money on average because most of the men I know negotiate more aggressively but the flip side of being more aggressive is you also end up in jail more okay because you're more aggressive you know and that's there are differences between the genders and those differences lead to different outcomes sometimes i believe a woman should be permitted to do anything a man is permitted to do but i don't predict that every activity is going to be 50 50 because it's not yeah they shouldn't expect equal outcome for equal treatment that's the thing is that it should be equality and authority not equality and outcome um and so Yes, we should be trying to um, 
you know, get businesses to want to employ women. But that comes from women finding skill sets that other people don't have. And I think the really big thing that we focused on in the secession panel that I think is worth noting is that feminism is supposed to be an empowerment movement, supposedly. Supposedly. And, and how... How empowering is it when you go from having a man take care of you to having the state take care of you? Because you're still not independent if the state is setting up legislation and you're going to work and you're um, and the person that is employing you doesn't really want to pay you the same. So you go to work every day thinking to yourself, am I really earning this or is this just some state mandated thing that I'm getting I'm getting paid the same amount as the the guy with the same position. Well, for, Do I really deserve it? And that's not empowering at all. That's awful. Yeah. I don't want that. I'm not a victim. I can take care of myself. And you know what? At my job, they know I'm indispensable. If they got rid of me, they would be so S O L. And you know what? I get paid really good money. Because I found a niche market which I have niche skills for. You do and have that's niche what skills. that is what separates women in a company in a business finding a niche skill. when she has a niche yeah, she everybody scratches now. it <laughs> when i have a niche i scratch it yep okay well that was good <laughs> that was really good i'm yeah this is a good one <laughs> <laughs> well you're a little bit stunned there you small, look a little shell shocked s- small win <laughs> small win uh, the, the other so one was you, a big you, one. You heard it first, folks. If you, if you want equality in the workplace, find a niche Yep. if you're a woman. Otherwise, if you're a man, you're okay. Uh, well, oh, if my you're a man, God, find a niche, too. Good God. This what? is not what I said. Oh, that's what I got from no, no, something that I you're said better right at afterwards. than anybody else. Yeah, that's what I said afterwards. You need to find something, no matter what your gender, that you're good at, better at than everybody else. I know. Yeah, I mean, I know objectivism back it, backwards and forwards. That's why I have the job that I have. Yes, it's very niche. Yeah, Again, it yeah, is. I, I understand and how I actually, niche your job really is. The it's thing very, is, very niche. is that the reason it's so niche is because of the simple fact it, that most objectivists don't both have knowledge of objectivism and people skills. <laughs> Those things don't normally go hand in hand. I actually have people skills and well, knowledge yeah. of objectivism. I mean, I it I, more goes hand in hand with Asperger's syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Absolutely. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Well, love it or hate it, you are the greatest thing to happen since uh, Anne ran to objectivism. I know. So... Uh, I don't know if that's. I I, I think that's a compliment, actually. I think but I, that's I'm, pretty much a sign that pretty much no I one has I passed touched her. it. Like, have you oh, seen that's, that's Leonard's you. daughter? Leonard, the the official heir of the Anne oh Rand. yeah, um, Kira Peikoff. She oh was named after god, one of the characters. She is stunning. I know she's gorgeous. Oh my god, Absolutely that's somebody stunning. I would dearly love to meet. I'm um, sure you would, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think she's. Uh, every, if you're listening, Kira. Every objective stream. <laughs> Every objectivist dream. So, Rich, you did Even the uh, <laughs> you did the keynotes. Uh, well, one of the keynotes at Keenvention. Uh, what all did you talk about on that? Um, mostly, I don't remember. <laughs> We'd have to roll the tape. Um, <laughs> 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 I I I know I touched on some of my usual uh, boilerplate, which is talking about. Um, you know, kind of a defense of keen style activism. I think keen style activism has actually made a huge difference in keen. It has made us some enemies, but it has also made us a lot of friends. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I see that every day. But, you know, when I have a positive encounter with a local person, I don't pull out a camera and film it, is the thing. So it never goes on the internet. Whereas when I get a jackass, the first thing I do is pull out my camera and film the jackass. The problem is that I'm then creating the illusion that everybody in Keene is a jackass, and it's actually quite the opposite. And uh, you guys walked down the street with me in Keene the other day, and it was nothing but, hi, Rich, hi, Rich, what's up? Both of you were there for that. No, I no, I, I was not there. You weren't, you weren't there. You were there. 
Yeah, and uh, um, there was another day when I was with Derek, and it was the same thing. People were like, hey, Derek. It was like something out of a freaking Disney movie where yeah. he's just waving at everyone, hello, well, like across the freaking street. They're like, hey, Derek, you know. Princess Diana. Well, Derek is like something out of a, out of a <laughs> Disney movie. He's a Disney princess. If I was ever going to go gay, well, he's I'd go Derek. He's Princess um, Diana. <laughs> no, he, he's, he's Marilyn Monroe. That's, that's who uh, Derek Day is. <laughs> oh, my yeah. God. Did you put that up on the Rebel Love Show page? Uh, I need to. You do. I, you should I put it up got, with this I episode. I think I got one of the best stuff. Uh, He's more than that, Jay. though. He's that Queen Marion. You should put it up with this episode. You've got to get a picture of him in the Marilyn Monroe outfit, covered co- covered by the cape of of the of apparently the Queen when she wears it, and a crown, I, because <laughs> he is Queen Marion, Marilyn. I got I got a <laughs> uh, I got a photo uh, at the uh, Halloween party. I went as a. Uh, as Indiana Keene in the Temple of the State, mm. and uh, just because I couldn't find a whip, so I had my camera holstered. Um, <laughs> you could have borrowed my whip. You could have borrowed my whip. I brought a whip. I know. You I did was bring the devil. I should have borrowed it. Mm-hmm. I know. Oh. Um, but oh, be careful. Those my, with whips oh are sometimes a little God. buggy. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, Conan was there and taking photos. So like you know, like I got a photo. Like I was standing over there, and like you know, Derek J came over. And not gay, but it was it, it was an a, an honor to have him dressed up as Marilyn Monroe and take a photo of oh, him you touching, know you touching my way. chest hair like you know you in a liked photo it in as that Marilyn. Way. Oh yeah, that that was oh yeah. I mean, yeah. every, every guy in the Free State Project has a crush on Derek. We Day. definitely have to share this photo onto the Rebel Love page now that you've we talked do. about it. It will it, be on there. It's yeah. erotic. Yeah. It, it, it is. <laughs> it, it is kind of erotic. It's erotic. It is, erotic, it is very though. erotic. Wow. It is. Yeah. It's incredibly erotic. Yeah, it's, a, it's an amazing photo. But, um, yeah. Yeah, so uh, other stuff that happened at Keenvention. Um, what, what were your guys' uh, favorite moments? Oh man, you know, I think I I think I killed <laughs> on the new movers panel actually. I think I did a good job like I uh I was using the hashtag no sleep till keen because I actually had not slept the night before except for 15 minutes or 30 minutes of sleep in the ride over. And uh you know, I just I you know, had a Red Bull and uh went up and a Red I, Bull love show. Yeah, on the Red Bull love show. And uh I went up to do the <laughs> panel and I bootlegged it too. So you can actually see this panel um, if you go to the Shire Dude Facebook page, I've I've put a link to it to the bootleg. You're welcome for the audio, by the way. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, man. What was your yeah. favorite, I ca- Rich? I can't share my favorite moments out of deference to the uh, people or person or people involved in my favorite moment. <laughs> 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 but the panels were nice too <laughs> oh, my, my, my favorite moments are not the panels I mean don't get me wrong I love the couple well I take it back I did have one favorite uh, in regards to all the panels and, and what not um, my favorite moment uh, uh, me and a friend we, uh, we got high because you know that's what you do. Because you smoke. Can we do that on the air, by the way? Here, I don't care. Go ahead. Oh, okay, groovy. Yeah, that that can be a thing. Yeah, you're rich. You're rich, Paul. You, you're like, fucking rich, Paul. You smoke, smoke it with I you am got fucking. Em. I am fucking <laughs> rich, Paul. But we're not exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, uh, I, uh, I, uh, four twenty. You know, yo, yo, yolo swag blazed it up for uh, no, an honor. No, of, yolo uh, James swag. 420, 420 blaze it blaze it there you go in honor of uh james cleveland i our, remember our leader okay now. are you guys gonna set leader. up to to help me i dropped the ball november 5th but to help me set up the april 20th 420 rally oh, i want people flyering in the fucking streets especially yeah. wherever there's a uh, head shop I want people finding drug dealers and giving them little stacks of flyers and saying, give these to everybody you do business with to help us promote the rally because the dealers won't won't come. They're going to be sketched, but they'll send their customers who don't have much to lose because all they do is smoke and they're committing misdemeanors. But um, that's a great idea. That's how I promoted the original 420 rally in Keene, and it worked out really well. To where we had 30 people before the cops even knew we were there. Yeah. And, you know, it could be a huge thing, but Keen has kind of played out in that. It's been done there, you know. But yeah. a new 
Oh, good God. I'm sorry. I'm very hiccupy tonight. It's <laughs> no because worries. I've been drinking. So, uh, scruffy men, do uh, any of you want to know my favorite moment? Well, let me say let me finish my I, favorite I, moment. Okay. I, I was in the middle of my favorite moment. Okay. So, mm. yeah. Uh, so, I, I did it in honor of James Cleveland because that, that was his campaign uh, mm. slogan. So we go up and we watch it. His campaign slogan was "Do it in honor of James Cleveland." No, it was. Oh, <laughs> it, it was. Uh, I was thinking that's a little. You gotta do it yeah, before yeah, we yeah. die. So <laughs> now James James comes across as a very genuine person. Like he's like one of the most genuine people I've met. And he, he comes across as a very regular guy, and it's really weird because I have a lot of um, similar backgrounds to him. Like like we were both hugely overweight at one point. We we're both like really into TV and video games, and you know we didn't we weren't woken up. And when we did wake up, it was really because of Ron Paul than anything else. And um, we both, re I mean, he moved here. Ron Paul made more anarchists than any anarchist I know. I know, There's right? A puzzle. I know, it's crazy. <laughs> it's insane. And, uh, man, his his keynote was a tearjerker. Like, he got us. There, there's a couple moments during that speech, especially it was like, just do something, anything. Just, like, go ahead. Don't worry about it. Um, you know. Which speech is this? James Cleveland's uh, keynote. Oh, speech. okay, yeah, that was nice. Yeah, it was because uh, I wasn't expecting it from him. He's a very he's a he's a very quiet guy in person. He's very quiet, very normal. He, he's a normal guy. That's very. He's not charismatic. He's not um, you know in your face. He's not you know yelling from the rooftops. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, in this situation, like he came across as so genuine, so heartfelt. That I mean, there are people in the audience that had tears in their eyes. Like he got a standing ovation from like fifty people. Would you know? I mean, at, no, maybe like eighty. Of that. that there was a packed house. Like it was incredible to see. Like it was a. Uh, I, I'm glad I was there for it. Um, I'm glad I didn't miss it. But convention, actual, you know, functions of convention. That was by far one of my favorites. Now, my favorite part really was the Halloween. That like the Halloween party, and then also the. Uh, the uh, bonfire party the night before, but the bonfire party was good. Yeah, yeah. So both both parties were amazing. Um, but uh, actual convention wise, that was worth the ticket going there. It was just to see James Cleveland's speech. Like it, it was very moving, and uh, he d he deserves all the credit he got. If it, once that's up on Free Keen's website on their YouTube channel, check it out, folks. It's it was very moving. Anyway, Did they comp the people on the panel? Yes. Oh, cool. Yeah. So I technically didn't pay it. I, okay. I was, I was when you said panels. it was worth the price. So it was I know. Worth no, the I would have bought a ticket. A I, I didn't buy. I didn't buy a ticket because obviously I was on. A, I was on two panels. So like I didn't. Yeah, they comped me. But uh, yeah, they I, comped me too. Yeah. Well, you are keynote, so obviously, yeah, yeah all terrible. of us were. Yeah. But if I wasn't on a panel, I definitely would have bought a ticket, and it would have been more than worth the purchase. Mm -hmm. uh, for to see, to see that keynote, like that was like it was awe inspiring. Yeah. And it, it was just crazy because he's just a normal guy. He's a normal dude, you know. He's not. Uh, he doesn't come across as like, an, you know, like you're, like, the like quote unquote crazy activist type. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I would have voted him least likely to get arrested until he did. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, but you know, he's he's definitely got some stones. Once he's gotten to, oh, the, yeah. to that point, he's like, no, you're not going to push me any further. Exactly. Um, yeah, he is. He is good people and. You know, for me, I was thinking when I was when I was at the convention, I really wasn't going to that many of the uh, of the panels and that kind of thing. And the thing is, doing activism every day, for me, going to a thing like that is like I go there less to do activism than kind of to unwind between activism yeah. and. Luckily, people come in from, you know, out of town and out of state who have seen what I do and they want to meet me and they want to chill out with me. So I guess that's providing some service to the to the venue. No, I absolutely <laughs> agree. Um, like for me, I spent most of the time literally just networking and hanging out with like minded people. Yeah. You know, that that's that to me, that's the best part of convention or any like Liberty Forum and even Pork Fest. It's not so much going to any, like, talks or anything like that. It's just being around a hell of a lot of like-minded individuals. Because, you know, I mean, we do live here, but, like, there's not that many people all in Keene at once. Or, you know, there's not in one hotel. You know, like, pretty much yeah. almost everyone that I love in my life was in that hotel. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So um, it's it's heartwarming to be around so many people at the same time that 
that are like minded that you know that are part of your life. Well, I don't know if the Liberty Forum people will appreciate me saying this, but the truth is, I don't even pay for Li- Liberty Forum. <laughs> I go to Liberty, and they never have asked me to speak. But I just go to Liberty Forum. And I chill out in the rooms and chill out with the people and chill out in the lobby of the hotel and smoke cigarettes and and talk to people and don't go to the speakers. I did the same. You know? I did the exact same thing. I didn't. Uh, I didn't go to any of the talks. I just wanted to hang out with the people that were there. Yeah. yeah. So for people out there who can't afford to go to Liberty Forum, maybe you can afford to go to Liberty Forum. But just, just show up at the hotel, be there, be, be another. Be there and just don't go to the talks. Cause I, I feel like if you go to a talk, you're kind of stealing. Uh, Plus yeah, I stealing would agree. Them. I would not. I've I've traded for talk tickets with people who have bought them uh-huh. when I've really wanted to go to something. But most of the time I'm happy in the vendor room and the hallway and and, uh, you know, Alt Expo. You know, you can always go to Alt Expo without even officially being at Liberty Forum. Exactly. Um, but it's the same time, same place, so you're going to see all those people, and that's a blast. Yeah. What was your favorite moment, Lauren? Um, I think my favorite moment had to be when I got raffled off. <laughs> oh yeah, Delbert Dale, and uh, Dale didn't want your uh, yeah. d- didn't want your date. He didn't want the cookie. Nope. I don't know. Dale you, won. Dale won. Oh, that's hilarious. And he, went, and he, was, yeah. and he went to the Halloween party in a onesie, which was just freaking hilarious. Yeah. Um, hmm. he, and so, he would have made a great date for you. you no, know, my well, yeah, I was excited, and then he was like, "It's not fair. Give it to one of the straight guys." Hmm. And um, I love how in that Sentinel uh, source, and this is it's actually true when the guy yeah, that won, actually, no one knew who the fuck he was, I was, and like they actually reported that in the Sentinel in the Sentinel source, they reported that to, they didn't know who won, who he who, who he was when he won the date with you. Are you going to reveal how that yeah, date ended? In, Were you O girl? No, I was. <laughs> no, he, he he was he was a nice. <laughs> He was a nice guy, <laughs> and we had a good conversation. He was a very nice guy, and hopefully he'll end up um, as a part of the Free State Project. He's already moved. He lives in Keene, but he didn't move here as part of the Free State Project. He actually moved to hang out with Liberty people that have absolutely nothing to do with with the Free State Project. So Can he really introduce funny. us to these people? Because I, we should know Yeah, them. I'm working on it. So um, we're friends, and we talk sometimes, and... He lives in Keene, and he's cool, and um, I'll probably hang out with him. I invited him to hang out with us and go to dinner with us after um, after uh, Free Talk Live next Thursday. If you I'm consider yourself co-host. a Liberty lover, and you're in New Hampshire, and you haven't met the other uh, the Free Staters, what then the hell is wrong with let you? me say, come by the KAC. And introduce yourself to me or come by Manchester and introduce yourself to somebody. Show up at an event. Get to know what it's like to be in a community of like-minded people because that there, rocks. There are so many meetups all around the state in Keene and Manch and Concord and, and Nashua and the coast and the lakes region. There's there's meetups at least once a week, if not more, all over the state. There's mm. no reason if, like, you don't have to be a free stater. Just if you're living in New Hampshire, even in Mass, drive up, come hang out for a little bit. Like, there's so, like, going to, like, any meetup where there's, like, 20 or 30 of us, it's incredible to be around like-minded people because mm. then you're not, like, you're not the crazy one because we're all crazy. So, like, you're actually surrounded by people that all think like you. And we're very welcoming because, frankly, we want you to move here. We Ex- want you exactly. to become a part of what we're doing. And, uh, you know, we're doing some great work here in, in New Hampshire. I keep I keep thinking about those 15 legislators that we've got. And in the system, I, I'm a civil disobedience and agorism guy. So in system activism like that isn't like my chosen thing. But I love that people are doing that. And I'm perfectly happy to come out and vote to support their activism. Well, for me, I mean, I love it for the fact that, I mean, the, the joke is legit in regards to give give a minarchist six months, you yeah. know. And uh, when we when you see huge libertarian um, uh, wins in the state house, you know, where else do fifteen libertarians running as both Republicans and Democrats win elections in one location? 
That only happens here. That doesn't happen anywhere else. That definitely doesn't happen like you know where I come from in Illinois or New York or Florida or anywhere. It doesn't. It doesn't happen in those locations. It only happens here. We've actually had an election in New Hampshire where there was a free stater running as a Democrat running against a free stater running as a Republican. That is so beautiful because you can get up there and you know. Can you imagine doing that in a race where they actually stage debates and being able to felt to, you know, for a libertarian speaking from the right to debate a libertarian speaking from the left? And maybe that'll help triangulate people in on libertarianism. I love that idea. Oh, yeah. One thing I also loved was, uh, especially here in, in uh, uh, Manch area, um, a couple Republicans uh, that – well, the, um, free staters that were running as uh, Republicans lost. But a couple of free staters that were running as Democrats, including Elizabeth and Amanda, both won. Yeah. I know. Congratulations, and, and those are guys. Are, uh, you rock. Yeah, and those are both people I really wanted to see in uh, uh, the state house. So it's it's fascinating to see two hardcore you know, liberty lovers going in as, quote-unquote, uh, Democrats and, uh, you know – Changing it from within. And also, I'm very happy that uh, that Shem won. I'm very, very happy that Shem, Shem won. did win. Yes. I did. didn't I didn't know that he had. Groovy. So who all won? Oh, you're asking the wrong person. I just know those three won. I don't know who else <laughs> won. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, I figured someone would also uh, over at this table actually knew who won. We, I was at the New Movers Party, which had the election results. I wasn't paying attention. You know, speaking of, of le legislative victories, um, I definitely want to propose a toast in one of the hit pieces against a free staters running. And I want to say this is the one about Elizabeth. I don't know if you heard about this, Rob. Uh, I think it was Granite State Progress cited the Rebel Love Show for part of their info. No shit. So, uh, hey, guys, uh, over at uh, G, uh, you know, Granite State, uh, thanks. Thanks hey, for viewing. Watch well, uh, on, yeah. tell, tell all well, your friends to subscribe to us. On behalf of Keene, yeah. on behalf of Keene, New Hampshire, let me tell you that when, when now that you've got haters, you've arrived. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> I loved it. I, I, didn't know, I didn't know our haters actually watched our I, show. I was I feel so like, excited and I flattered. I was amazed. My probation officer told me that everything he would get like three or four copies of everything that i posted on the internet <laughs> mailed to him uh uh anonymously he said he didn't know who was sending these things but somebody was sending him printouts of everything i said on the internet wow <laughs> wow that's insane but no i didn't know that man that's stop free keeners are a little kooky We've made it, man. Yeah, we. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just want to see like actual politicians talking about this show at one point, too. right? Like you know, going on like speeches in front of like you know press, like yeah, you know, in that damn rebel love show. <laughs> da, 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 da. They, they got all these free staters. Da, 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 da. You got to get a recording of one saying, "Silence! I kill you." <laughs> <laughs> oh man, um, but uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Keenvention was a. Uh, I I love that Keenvention took place. Um, is that Rich? Was this your first Keenvention? Because uh, uh, <laughs> well. uh, this was my first Keenvention. Last time I here hit this. Last time I was in uh, jail. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like some drugs, little girl? I would, <laughs> like, I would like some drugs, little girl. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, you guys oh, rock. <laughs> oh, wow. So, so we had a question about Keenvention or something? I don't know. We were talking about Keenvention, I guess. I mean, it, it, was, a, it was a fun, fun, uh, fun journey. It was a blast for yeah. me, definitely. If and if you want to get to know an activist, <coughs> convention is the place to do it because it's a small enough convention that you know I managed to talk to everybody who wanted to talk to me there. As far as I could tell, there was nobody saying, "Hey, hey, talk to me," and I didn't have time. And that happens all the time at Liberty Forum and especially uh, Pork Fest. Yeah, spent a, we spent quite a bit of time hanging out with each other actually. oh yeah and that's the nice thing is it also gives me a chance to hang out with the yeah, other it, activists it was because really great. i never get out to manchester anymore and i miss you guys well, you definitely need to come out to manch more often i do and it's a sh it, it, uh, well if I've, i can start a show here i'll move here 
You yeah, should. It, it was nice to yeah. actually get to spend some well, time. Well, it was also, I mean, for, for, for the viewers and listeners sitting at home, because you should be sitting here in New Hampshire, um, Rich Paul being on here was like a last minute thing. I didn't know you were coming. I didn't know you were even in town until like literally like thir- like an hour before we started recording this. I called I, him. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I didn't even know I was going to be in town until somebody was just coming out here, and I was like, okay, I want to see my peeps in fucking, <laughs> kid, you know, yeah, Manchester. Man. This know. shit does not happen elsewhere. Mac, back in back in Orange County, before I moved here, I had a show that I was trying to do. It was like a local, like, Liberty Scene show where I gave the news of, here are the events coming up. <laughs> and it was like, just like, you know, a recap of everything coming up, so everyone was on the same page. And I wanted someone to co-host that with me. Just someone to sit along the side, maybe say a few lines, that's it. Mm-hmm. And I had the hardest time finding someone to do that. And here, you'll never have that problem. <laughs> you have co-hosts all around, all oh, around yeah. you. Well, you know, we've – should we should we talk about at all about the idea that we've been – You might as well spitball of it, yeah. yeah. That's a great yeah. idea. You might as well p- pitch it on the Rebel Love Show. Okay, well, basically, what we're talking about here, and, uh, you know, we need contributions of uh, producer-type people and talent-type people. And Are we talking about the show we're going to do together? Kind of thing. Yeah, I'm talking about I'm Oh, going, my uh, God. I'm going to be I'm gonna be Hot Donna on this. Too, hot awesome. Donna? Hot so, Donna. Uh, basically, we're talking mm. about something, doing something that's kind of akin to Second City TV or Saturday Night Live, except not so much comedy based but political based and having things like uh different segments on it like that activist show is one where we're all sitting around just passing a bowl around and talking and cutting it together like that like that 70s show smoking montages yeah man and like that's just like one of the segments that would be on the show Wow, so, that is so distracting. What's I, 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 don't, I know. I don't know what she's doing. <laughs> I'm not sure the mic is it, working. It sounds really weird to me. I, I can hear you. I, I can hear you can through that. She was doing all sorts of, for you audio listeners, she was doing all sorts of like <laughs> pantomimes. This is why I you should watch she, the YouTube because I had the camera right It looked like she was like juggling pizza pies. I thought she might pies. be belly dancing there. It was, it <laughs> no, was we, we were, no, but we're I communicating without voice. And I had I, I missed the communication. It, wow. just, it sounds so different. Like it sounds very... Well, I think you might hallway. be hallway. It sounds like a hallway. <laughs> it's it's fine. You're, you're you good. should smoke a little bit more. No, yeah. that's not. It, that's not <laughs> oh, what's going on. Yeah, that is not what's going on. I've been thinking this for a while. I just finally decided to say something. Oh well, it's about time. Because when you see something, say something. Oh my gosh. Hey, can you do me? Can you do me a favor? Can you just you know? Can you talk in your uh, your lowest voice for the rest of the episode? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> Warm up. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Are you Take a time. She's too high for you. <laughs> what? Peter. <laughs> Peter. Instead of saying Peter, just say my name in Lois's voice. Robert. <laughs> <laughs> This is happening right now. I, I know. Oh, she, that's a little Shy bit creepy. Dude. She sounds like a horror movie in the doll. No, you know? she sounds exactly like Lois from uh, she's Family like, Guy. She's like, she's like, and I should probably move back for this. <laughs> you fell for that, Nate. You fell for that. <laughs> you realize there's no parking on the grass. Though. <laughs> <laughs> that's what she does. She's like. <laughs> Oh wow! That's Lois, right? I like nailed it. Hmm. Okay, I'm not a big Family Guy guy. Yeah, she she's doing she's doing Lois pretty well. I don't okay. know about the laugh. I don't know if it's translating well know. enough into the mic, but it it's pretty good. I don't know. I mean, it, to me, it was like a she's cartoon just, just witch. Like I was ex- so I was expecting her to pop <laughs> pop out with boil boil toil and trouble. You want to go have some hot sex? I'm sorry. Were you making an offer to somebody? <laughs> oh, I'll, 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 I'll take it. So. Oh yeah, it's just like an <laughs> open thing. Like yeah. all, all my, like my relationship, right? Open relationship. No, I hate that term. By the way, I've just decided it's like the worst term ever is open relationship. Well, an open relationship is, is different from polyamory. An open relationship is different from polyamory. Right, that's what I'm saying. In polyamory, you're pursuing more than one <laughs> romantic relationship, or maybe. Right, open, open, open is just about being allowed to sleep with other people. And I'm like, 
I don't want to sleep with people that I don't have connections with. I think that's, yeah. How how could you well, do that? Well, the thing is, I mean, a lot really? of the a lot of the relationships that I've had in my life have frankly been flings. I mean, I get and it. I a g- fling can be a lot of fun. It can you be know? fun, and, but I see. I just I can't imagine yeah. myself being happy with that situation. See, see for me, like, I the way I see it, like if I don't have a connection with somebody, I just I mean, I guess I just I can't I can't get it up. You know? Well, for me, I <laughs> I need I I don't I, I don't want to just sleep around. I need that loving connection with uh, with another human being because it makes it tenfold better. Like mm. I I don't I can't go to just like sleeping around. I like oh. having. I that can't loving do it connection. at all. My body just doesn't. It's like no, I don't think so. That seems I don't know this person. Why? What are you doing? <laughs> But the fact that you have some connection with somebody doesn't necessarily mean that you want to be in a long term relationship for that with that well, person. Well, I mean, sometimes short term relationships are about what at least I expect. I mean, a fling can be can be nice. It, well, I, I'm not I saying don't a fling can't be. Have to have uh, a permanent well, I'm not. I'm connection. not. I'm not arguing against the idea of a fling. But what I'm saying is. Uh, what are you laughing so I, I think I've killed O girl. <laughs> she looks like she's are having you an O. Are you using a can opener to open your beer? <laughs> um, yeah, for the listeners at just... home, there's a bottle opener right here on the bottom of it. <laughs> what? Right here. There's a bottle opener yeah, on m- it. Yeah, most can openers, suddenly drifted the metal ones. I didn't know best, that. That's, yeah. like such that's a new news. kitchen implement. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> We're supposed to use lighters. Though, if you, what I was really shocked at, that there was a bottle opener in the ba- in the bathroom at the hotel we Oh, my we God, had. at the hotel, right? Yeah, at the hotel we all, that we shared. Like oh, they those. always have those both. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Rob, yeah, I didn't know Rob, that. Rob, Rob, back up. Common. Back up. We're not leaving this ambiguous. You are not doing that. The hotel that we shared. Okay. We're going to be clear. We stayed with, we had five people who are my closest friends staying in the hotel. Closest. (sighs) (laughs) How close were they? Josie. Josie (laughs) Wales is there. They were so close. Yeah. (laughs) I'm waiting for the end of that joke. (laughs) Come on, Laura. They were so close. No, and it was just my friends. It was like it was like it was you and you and I'm sorry, Shire dude and Rob. Things in that room move so fast. I, yeah, I'm not one of these. How fast? Oh we God. were fast asleep. We were fast asleep. Everybody was passed out. <laughs> we got back to the room. Yeah, well, every yeah, night. they were passed out after a long night. Rob, don't <sighs> Rob, don't start. Okay, I've had don't a let hard Rob. Okay, look, 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 don't. <laughs> Don't let Rob confuse you into thinking that his life is so much cooler than he says it is. And oh, no, my I've life been is cool. I don't have to say it. Is. Like a okay. dog. No, 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 no. <laughs> so, so Rob's over here, like <laughs> implying. Okay, so we spent the entire night out, saw outside the room, hanging out with our friends, having a great time. And by the time that everybody finally either, um, you know, stopped partying in our room or stopped partying outside, we were all so dog tired that all we ever did was pass out. So. So it was Rob. slow times at Ridgemont High for you guys. Yeah. And <laughs> oh, you know that's what? so sad. And Rob's over here like, oh, yeah, we were all so tired after activities. <laughs> oh, I wasn't talking about your activities. I was talking about mine. But nonetheless, Snap. yes. Boom. Anywho. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you went that far down the rabbit hole on that. I, I wasn't fishing wow. for it. I was just you messing. Were. It. No, I no, I wasn't. No. Oh, speaking <laughs> of polyamory, you guys should you guys should talk about your appearance on Unity Evolves at least for a second. What yeah, is Unity Evolves. Oh, it's in the Liberty. Matrix, Liberty. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. No, uh, there's a uh, activist out of uh, Illinois uh, goes by Liberty Phoenix. Real he, great guy. He's an amazing guy. Okay, that's and, the uh, guy who publishes NCC seventeen seventy six. I have no idea Not what sure. that even is. Okay. It it references L. Neil Smith a lot. Oh. Hmm. Anywho. Oh, well. Go ahead. Ah. Sorry. Um, Speaking of rabbit holes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, met him at, I met him at Porkfest. He lived like a... He lived like an hour away from where I l- used to live, which is like kind of crazy that we never like touched base before, like until I got here. I was in Florida with Ian and everybody, and I didn't know any of these motherfuckers. When that's I moved insane. Here. That's that's insane. So, anyways, uh, me and Lauren did a uh, 
I mean, it's going to be on his podcast feed, so they're going to listen to this. You guys should really listen to this. It's like the most revealing interview I've ever done. Yeah, me too. They asked, they popped the question, and they uh, that well, wasn't that, 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 what first, I meant. first off, that first wasn't off, what I meant. first off, first off, don't answer it because if you want the answer to that, which is I guess change from that answer, you got to listen to that podcast. Wait, hold on, you got to repeat the question for the. Listeners. If you want to know what we talked about on in regards to polyamory on that podcast you gotta listen to the podcast which is going to be either <laughs> so theirs what did you talk or about? you can listen well, you, what was the question Rich, Rich, you, give us a no, teaser. No, no. Rich, yeah Rich. you haven't told them what the question is why would they want to go listen <laughs> you can't tease to them without this question yeah it's, it's true it oh that is you true you can't like it's throw like, out it's the like paint and roll it back in the nobody's gonna you're gonna tell us that the answer hey, is 42 look. and we don't even know <laughs> what the question is i should have answered 42 what you just did what you just did was you took the 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 bait, <laughs> took the bait, didn't put it on the hook, and you just threw it in the water. You just threw exactly. It in the water the bait you just throw them bait, dude. You can't, you can't. You can't throw the hook without the fucking bait in it. It's not gonna catch any fish, man. Wow, you're you're such a bad hooker. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my oh, my God. <laughs> oh yeah, we're gonna have fun on this show. Well, you yeah. can answer that question. You we're want... already having fun on this show. We are, <laughs> but as it expands, yeah. it'll become more. F- this is gonna okay, be the I'm, greatest. I'm, 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 I'm drifting into Rebel metaphor here, ever. so yeah. I'm just gonna let it go right there. <laughs> this is gonna be the single greatest Rebel Love show. No, it ever. already is. Yeah, yeah. It already is. <laughs> By the way, you can. You can say what that question is if you want to say it, but otherwise the podcasters listening at home can listen to that episode. And if you've yeah, enjoyed no, I mean, this you episode. You have to tell them what the question is, though. Hey, look, you guys should listen to, to uh, the Unity they... Evolved. Listen, I'm going to show you how it's done. Okay, watch. All right, listen. Watch. Okay, I'm watching. <laughs> All right. Wait, this oh, is I'm you watching. as Rob, so you have to wait, wait, be like wait, Rob. Wait, wait, I have to be like Rob. Yeah. I need a drink. Guys, guys. And, you know, there was this podcast that we did on Unity Evolve, and Kef, our good friend, you know, we were on this show. And so... <laughs> There's got to be more, this like, what? he's, like he's got what? more of, like, a hesitance in his voice, he does, and sometimes he, does, it, he gives and little cracks, not. man. Oh, right. And he says man at the end of sentences. Does, there you go, there you go. Man. So, yeah, man, go on. Uh, we did the show, Unity Evolved, and it was really cool, and we even talked about polyamory. It was, no, 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 no. But, the, the episode was about but, polyamory. And it, it and they even talked about it. <laughs> I, they did. She's they, trying to do the Rob impression. Leave her, leave her, let her do it. Oh, you don't want me to do the Ogre okay, so, impersonation. Oh, yes, I do. You're doing it after this. Okay, anyway. <laughs> so, so, anyway. <laughs> so, the so thing that you I guys, love. There, it was this crazy show where they popped the question. You guys should really listen to it if you want to know the answer to that question. What question? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there are some things I want to see pop, and there are some things that I don't want to see pop. Yeah. uh, Pimples fall into the second category. Any question. Cherries generally into the first. Do you believe in government? That could have been a question, and nobody's going to tune in for that question, because that's a no. Okay, it was a a question popped in regards to polyamory. (sighs) And I'll I'll give Was it somebody's polyamorous cherry? Oh, Wait a minute, Rob. So we were talking about polyamory on a polyamory show? It's not a polyamory no, wait, there show. Was a, wait, 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 wait. There was a question about polyamory on a show about polyamory? No way, Rob. Oh, my God, everybody, tune in. Yeah, and thank you, Captain Obvious. I'm seriously, I'm about to say this question myself because I'm, I'm like, you guys have beaten around the bush. Yeah, yeah. For like yeah, half of this episode. Shire did see it, so I'm go ahead. There's been a lot of bush beating going on I'm, here. I'm All right. enjoying so, the I think we this right longer than we can justify. We've got to do the reveal. Go, Rob. That. I listen. Tell them what do you the want to, Do you want to tell it? You tell it. You, you tell, tell it. it. Okay. It's your thing to tell. It is my thing to tell. The Should we question, do the reaction too? The reaction was great, but it has changed since that podcast. But do you want to answer? See, that's why I don't want to ask them. They can just go back and listen to it. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm kind of like, you know, keep kicking the ball down because I figured that's something for they you. They asked us if we were dating because and she we're, threw we're, me under the on. bus, people. I did not which throw combination him under of the you bus. were were actually dating, and which combination of you did she say you were dating? <laughs> well, was, you brought the, this. You brought this up. You you baited it without the bait. 
Well, is the, is apparently what? not a masturbator. <laughs> He's not. He's not. We need to teach him how to promote things better. Okay, anyway, you do a lot of things really well, but promotion's not your strong suit. Uh huh. But me, I think it's masturbation. Me, I know how. I, love. I know how to whore out my show to anybody. Oh, well, <laughs> trust me, I, I've seen you go full old girl multiple times. Full old girl. Full old, old girl. I have um, never seen Lauren go full old. You've never seen old me go girl. full old girl. Oh, you ready? But you ready? oh god, god, it's got to here be a treat. Here it goes. Here it goes. Hi guys, welcome to Objectivist Girls. So today we're going to talk wait, about. Wait, wait, wait. At wait, the wait, Free wait, State wait. Project headquarters. Sorry. Okay. My name is Lauren, and that song you just heard is Shrug. And that's my new song that's going to be on Atlas Shrug Part 3, the movie. And, <laughs> and um, it's, what did I say? Oh, yeah. I'm filming at the Free State Project headquarters here in New Hampshire. So uh, today, guys, we're going to talk about, and then I'm When do you cut to the alien? Would the you alien. present me with a, uh, <laughs> would you present me with a copy of the lyrics to Shrugged? Because, yes. uh, or are the lyrics in the video? Because I am a little bit hard of hearing, and I now have the, the I now have a hard time sometimes getting the lyrics of songs. I really just hey, like the first verse lyrics. I it, think they're the best. Is it me, or does this episode just turn into a Shire Dude episode? <laughs> pretty much, yeah. I mean, th- this has pretty much yeah. become a Shire Dude. Is that like, because we went episode. to sex, or it's, I don't no, know? No, I no, haven't no, no, watched. No. Oh, you have not watched a Shire Dude episode? Okay, later tonight we're gonna oh smoke up God. Mar. We're gonna go to the Quill. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna see gonna the media. Shire Dude yeah. Marathon. It's gonna be a Shire Dude Marathon. Yeah, man. Because oh, I am yeah. serious. You will love if you, if the show that you're talking about. He's like the um, Shire Dude here. I, I've said this before. He's like the robot chicken of the Free State Project. Thanks, man. That's okay. Really, yeah. Like I mean, in a huge compliment. Like it's like it takes like compliment. the craziness of everything. On his eyeballs. He's pretty amazing. He might as well. <laughs> It's that trippy. It's a, it's it's the trippiest activist footage you will ever see in your life. Dun, it's trippy, dun, 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 and, and it's all available dun, dun, at shiredude.com. Dun, dun, dun. There you go. Isn't he pretty? Isn't he pretty awesome, guys? That was a great plug. Thank He's you, guys. Oh, well, you're welcome. <laughs> that cost me fifteen dollars, uh, <laughs> listeners. <laughs> Okay, well, here's a question we've been... Oh, by the way, the reason the show is so weird, it has nothing to do with anything other than we just all know each other way too well at this point. We're all way too it's, comfortable. It's local it's like comedy. This too. And some of us are Hashtag on drugs. Hashtag it's like this, too. Hashtag <laughs> oh. polyamory. Yeah. Yeah. So anyways, um, but yeah, uh, watch Shire, dude, and go listen to the... Go subscribe to our podcast feed so you can get the answer to what we were even talking about. And Rich, <laughs> you're about to ask a question. Was I? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and welcome to short attention spam, short attention spam theater. <laughs> okay, I will ask a question. What question was I going to ask? <laughs> we should talk about. Um, let's see. What else was there going on? I oh, I remember. Let's see. Oh, perfect. Um, Rich, wait. Go. Okay. Basically, how are we going to make it so that activis- activists up here can support themselves doing activism? That's a that's producing a tough content. Um, that that is the thing that it's kind of the holy grail of the free state movement because if we can keep an if we can create an industry out of here that. You know. I, 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 I've thought about that in regards to, like, video activism. Mm-hmm. And I really do think that and maybe it's everyone at this table and maybe other people that we personally know or people that have, haven't even moved here yet. I mean, we but, could just raffle off dates with Lauren, but... <laughs> that this, this actually worked out really well. I hear he made a lot of money off of my raffle. How much did you make? He made. I didn't make Darryl. anything. He was my pick. You should get a cut next time. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Yeah. Do I get a cut? Yeah. In well, fact, in well, fact, Daryl should be getting a cut. That, that's the thing. Uh, that, that's been the problem with the New Hampshire style of activism is the activist doesn't get a cut. And not just that, but in the case I of civilly disobedient people. Pimp, mm-hmm. pimps, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. But, but that's maybe what we need is activist pimps, people to make sure that the activists <laughs> get paid. And... Go out and pimp your activists, you know. So if you don't, if you want to come up here and you don't want to get arrested, that but you want to do activism, I would think about producing activism. 
Oh, yeah, you know? definitely. But Be the I, guy with the camera well, who doesn't get arrested. Well, what I was saying is, uh, yeah, I know. I hope I don't get arrested. I'm, I'm seeing you. I hope I don't get arrested. What? Is that what you're pointing at me for? No, you're... <laughs> is it, it coming up? It was, oh. really, it was really loud. Oh, I'm sorry, people. You just heard me vape. Anywho. <laughs> uh, no, wait, what I was saying is, with, with, activism, with like video activism, I really do feel like we're we're just one YouTube video, we're one documentary, we're one guest appearance on a TV show, like a, like a news report. We're like one thing away from like somebody, and it could be people that haven't even moved here yet. It could be people we've never met, mm. but at some point within the next couple of years, I really do feel like we can get to a point where like there's you know movies made and documentaries made and t- yeah. like reality TV shows that air on like you know. You know, yeah, broadcast we're going to be a serious subject matter yeah. at some point, especially the new movers, like people like us who are like full keen. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, my my whole thing is like video activism. Do you is... guys consider yourselves keen keen style activists, mm-hmm. even though you're in Manchester? I think I, I'll be honest. I I don't. Okay. No, However, they're, they're another level. We, we I, full I'm, keen's a different. I really thing. do. Okay, the people sit. Rich, the, the three of us are sitting at this table, and Lauren, Lauren's been doing a, a little bit different, but we all have different flavors. We all have a difference. Mm. Each one of us has a different style. I haven't tasted any of you. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> men. I'm always surrounded by men. Hey, women, I just, just, I, I'm not a sexist, but please, please move up here. I just can't even. Please, I, I need more women in my life. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think my activism is? Your oh. activism is getting women. It's to the polyamory. Yeah. Well, yes, anarchism it, can it, be passed by injection. Is. Apparently, wow, that's I've super I've observed that. <laughs> you don't think you're going to attract more men to the movement? You don't think but men will move here goal. because Lauren Rumpler my lives goal, here? My goal is simply to teach people amazing things and what? help them realize that a uh, public education is not necessary, and b that that. Liberty is learnable in a way that um, that you can actually communicate it to other people, and that's why I started doing Objectivist Girl is is so that I can teach people um, all the things that they think they get in public school. Point being said, we all three of us have different styles, different unique talents, and different things that we're doing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but but we're all we're all on the radio. So. But nonetheless, We're not all, that different. All, all of no, all of we us, all of us are radio. in Manchester, and we do activism, and we do all, but we do a lot of video and audio work and whatnot. And I do kind of feel as if like Manchester is kind of like the it, it's the uh, mecca of podcasts. I mean, there's so many different podcasts that take place in Manchester right now. I um, mean, besides us, uh, I'll, I'll say Sex Lies and I'll give you a, a shout out: Sex Lies and Anarchy. Um, okay, well, but let's there's start also a fight there's with... also you know like Neil Cash Radio and there's um your your show True Objective there's um God, how many other shows am I missing There's like four more A Darker Shade of Liberty There's Did you say Free Talk Live Free Talk Live doesn't take place here It takes place in Keene oh, Yes now oh, oh, now according to Free Talk Live, live okay. uh, Keene New Hampshire is still the epicenter the video and audio oh. epicenter of the liberty movement. So can I start? No, no, can I provoke a fight here? No, no. Here? Can, can I provoke drop. a fight here? You just there, I That's stir the pot, me. get yeah. people oh, interested. You're gonna have to lick the spoon. Look, I, I'm a full. I am a full believer in. Uh, oh, I'm sure it's a lovely spoon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a full believer in competition of the marketplace, free markets. Um, True story. The first week I was here, I kind of talked shit. Here we go. I really shouldn't have, and I apologize to people that I did. Um, Garrett and Derek, there's a co- them too. I do apologize for this. However, that being said, I was at a new movers party. This is the first week I was here. This was like January 28th or something like that. All right, or no, it was like February first, February first or second. And uh, there's a new movers. Not uh, There was an MVP meeting. At the Quill, and this is when they didn't have a media room, and uh, um, Garrett was one of the talk, one of the the speakers that were up there doing a presentation. And then afterwards, they invited like new movers to come up and introduce themselves. Um, and I uh, I went up there, 
and uh, I introduced myself and said who I was and what I planned to do and why I'm here and stuff like that. And I was kind of giving like my little recap of my first week because this was like near the end of the week. So I've been there almost a week in the Shire. So I was giving like my whole recap of. By the way, Rich, you were the second free stater I ever met. I met you in an. Really? A- I met you in an Agaris taxi cab on my way to Area he Twenty Three. Oh, was that Riaz? That was Riaz. Yeah. Wow. Was he so, the first free stater? So t- I'm sorry. Te- <laughs> technically, you're the third free stater I ever met. But you're the second free stater I ever met in the state. And it was in an Agris taxi cab that I was taking to Area 23. Wow. It was, yeah, <laughs> it was fucking amazing. Yeah, I want to say, how did you feel about that? Um, I tried. It, it was. I, I knew who you were before you got here. So I, Before I got here? Oh, yeah. I knew who you were. I knew who almost everyone that was important that was here. I've been following LRN.FM for like three years. I've watched multiple YouTube channels left and right. I was reading about it. I'm well, 14. I got here in 2009, so none of that's before I got here. No, I, I've only been here since January, so right. I've, I've, been, I've been following this movement for years, and that's because mm-hmm. of video activism and you know podcasts and, and blogs and stuff like that. I wouldn't have known about it had I not found all that content. Um, but at any rate, I, I did talk shit. I, I remember standing up when I was introducing myself, and uh, I saw Garrett sitting down. Uh, I knew who Garrett was. I've, I've watched I, I, both me and both me and Shardy, I can probably vouch and say we've watched more than our fair share of Robin Hood videos, unfortunately. Um, I don't say that in a bad well, context. Just a lot of raw video. You say a lot of raw video. So not I'm a lot of happens. Raw okay, channel, wait. Did you just say unfortunately in a good context? Because no, I want no, you to explain no. to me how that works. I, I'm not talking about like <laughs> I, I'm not talking about like edited videos. I'm saying like free uh, Freeman TV raw. I used to watch that like all the time, and half the videos were just them walking around listening to oh, music. See, Garrett insists on posting stream of consciousness. Garrett does not edit. At all. Every ounce of footage he takes ends up on Freeman TV Raw. Nobody has taken up the challenge of going and making anything that's actually watchable out of it. So that's unfortunate. But it is a it is a job description for somebody out in the world who has way too much of their time, too much time on their hands, but they can't move to New Hampshire yet is go through Freeman TV Raw and find the interesting stuff and fish it out and cut it into little videos and edit it into something useful. Maybe that could be a segment on this show we've been talking about as well. Maybe we could do a segment of what Robin Hood did right or even what Robin Hood did wrong. Well, I absolutely agree. Um, I would love to see a lot of – I would love to see a a, – Robin Hood documentary be made personally. We we're we're up to our ass in stars, and we've got a shortage of producers. Exactly, and there that's needs to a be, sad thing. So, and you have these people trying to self produce, like me, that I can't self produce. That's not. why that's why we're gonna watch. I uh, have a marathon of Shire do because he's someone that produces activist footage. Yeah, well, that's what I, that's what I want to do. I want to make him into an activist producer to get when people are doing activism to get the content out there and cover it and know how to make money off it because we can't live for nothing. I mean, I'm I'm I've lost pretty much everything I had doing civil disobedience and much as I love doing activism, I've got to find a way to get money doing it, you know? Well, I absolutely agree. Um, but at any rate, so I'm standing up on uh, up in front during this MVP meeting, and uh, near the end of my little talk, I looked at Garrett. I was like, Garrett, Garrett, you are an inspiration. You're one of the reason. Like I would, I I discovered so much by looking through your camera lens. Um, that being said, I plan to bring competition to Keen. I said that to him in his face in front of an MVP meeting. I'd only been there like fucking five days. You know, I could like it was kind of crazy that I did that, and um, I'm not. I I mean, don't. I just met you, and this is crazy. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, I mean, I I I love all the Keeniacs. To be perfectly honest, the Keen's really why I move. But I I figured for me, like besides competition, I was just talking shit and I was like being overly Mm -hmm. cocky. But um, for me, like I, I I really feel as if like there's not enough that goes on in Manchester. And uh-huh. I want to be the person that, like, you know, that helps bring more attention to Manchester because there's more people here, but not there's there wasn't as much going on as there was in Keene. 
and I really mm-hmm. wanted to like I want to be able to do more and like make a name and just like do more activism and not just like help help others in other locations. Like I I really did move here to uh, I wanted Manchester because it was a bigger city, but for also because I I wanted to be help move stuff along here. The nice thing about Keen is we've made it to the debate stage. We've made it to the point where most of the locals in Keene know we're here, and it's time to start talking ideas with them. And that's a nice thing. Where in Manchester, people are not as aware of the Free State Project and libertarianisms and libertarianism and porcupines, and uh, you know they don't so much know who we are. So that's one of the things that I like about Keene. And this time when I was in jail, I probably had twenty other prisoners and or guards who came up to me while I was in jail and wanted to talk about the ideas of liberty. And, uh, you know, some of those are right there with us politically. On, on both sides, there are some guards who are very close. They're on the minarchist side of the scale, but there are a lot of guards who say, you shouldn't be in here, man. You know, I don't know why you're here. And uh, that's that's a good thing, you know. And uh, yeah. I, I'm sorry, that was the that train of thought just came to a screeching halt. <laughs> no, no Smash! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, any last thoughts before we uh, we end this little shindig of ours? Make sure you check out ObjectiveScurl.com and uh, Facebook slash Objectivist Girl and YouTube slash uh, Objectivist Girl without the I uh, in Girl. So it's Objectivist Girl. And then there's Facebook slash True Objective. And, um, and I think that'll do it for now, for today. <laughs> <laughs> Just list your Bitcoin QR code while uh, you're at yes. it. Uh, W G zero zero. No, I really don't know. That was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> I did that last. Um, uh, Uni evolved too. I, I know. Are we doing our self promotional? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Pimp uh-huh. your shit. At least point okay. three Bitcoin though. Well, let's see. I got a couple of things. Um, watch for some annou- announcements from the New Hampshire Jury Association, nhjury.com. We're forming a uh, board of directors and getting serious about fighting for uh, jury nullification super in New cereal? Hampshire. Super serial. We're okay. super serial. I just want to make sure you about, were super serial. About <laughs> uh, fighting for jury nullification in New Hampshire and jury rights in general, re, uh, expanding the right to jury trial. We do um, jury nullification most months, uh, every couple of weeks uh, here in Manchester. It would be an honor if one day you were out here to join us. I will absolutely do that because I am probably going to be the uh, uh, more or less – I will be on the board of directors of the New Hampshire Jury Association, and I'm also going to be doing uh, – fundraising and executive director so uh i will definitely do that and we're going to get serious about getting some activism done both inside and outside the system because i believe in in attacking something in, from every direction and uh that's what we plan on doing and it's going to rock uh so i guess that is my main project at the moment well people pay attention NH Liberty, uh, no, nhjury.com, right? Absolutely. The website, NH Pay attention to NH Jury. More, yeah. more will be revealed. And get ready for our show. And absolutely yeah. get ready for the show. I <laughs> want, be I want this, I want this to happen. I, re- I really do. I think I'm this could be a excited. blast. Like I'm so excited that you and I are, are going to do this together. It's going to be amazing. Are oh you super God. serial? I'm super serial, Rich. I'm super serial oh, too. Rich. <laughs> You're so awesome. All right, Shire Dude. Yeah, Get man. It. Well, I always plug ShireDude.com, but. I Plug also, Shire, dude. I, that sounds great. Phrasing, <laughs> please, people. Phrasing. Phrasing. I also want to plug. Um, you know, you, you can go to. You want to plug everybody, oh, Shire, man. dude. No, no. He's got some good shit coming up. He really does. He li- he likes to plug it. All. I've got a brand new show came all out. All the things that came out last does Monday. Does he plug all the things? <laughs> 
he, he does plug all the things. Oh, okay. Well, I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> I've got a brand new show that came out uh, on Monday, and I, uh, my co-host we're going to have on in either a show or two on the Rebel Love Show. And uh, you can go to freestateproject.org, and it's going to be the first thing that pops up. Uh, because we're some of the only people creating really good Free State Project content. Well, official. Free yeah, State Project. this I goes out on the Free State Project. Yeah, this goes out on the Free State Project YouTube channel, and it's partnered with um, Voices of Liberty. It's which is Ron Paul's new YouTube channel. So it's actually really exciting. A lot of people are putting work into this, and uh, it's yeah, it's gonna trigger the move. Well, let me close with. I really this. want Trigger to fucking move by now, man. It needs, to, it needs to happen next year, not in like five years from mm-hmm. now. Uh, Let me end with a disclaimer. Some of the things that I say may just mean I think this is an interesting idea and not necessarily I think this is a good idea. In other words, kids, don't try this at home. (laughs) There you go. Don't (laughs) don't move to the Shire and be do activism. Don't don't do it. Don't just ruin your life. Look, one thing: just don't become poly just because. (laughs) <laughs> it sounds cool, okay? It's a lot of work. Become poly because, let's face it, there's a there's an awful shortage of, of girls around here. Oh, I knew you were going to go there. It makes them very highly valued, you know? Well, how it, okay, if that's the point. Supply so any, and demand apply. So any man that goes poly, then doesn't that mean that their value is even worth more because there's more men? Um. Well, the thing about being poly as a man is basically it's a good deal for for women to be poly in the Free State Project because, you know, you can you could live your whole life just dating a couple of guys, you know, because there's a shortage of women and therefore the value of women is uh, very high up here. Um Oh, I, Lauren is looking. Oh, she's living right now. Oh, she is living. good God. She's so Part living. them. They are incensed. <laughs> you, <laughs> you are such a hypocrite. Okay, so you're like, Me? You're like oh, your sexist panel. No, 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 Rob over here. Oh, your sexist panel, blah, 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 blah. Oh, no, 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 you, no, no, you introduced it as a sexist here, panel. Don't be saying I said sexist panel. Men's but opinions. But it, it was. Men's opinions. Okay, Not when have you heard him hypocrite? When have you heard him criticize Dude, hippopotami? Man. I want to know. Hey. When did this man ever criticize <laughs> a hippopotamus or hippopotami kind anywhere? What did he say? You right here. <laughs> I just want to let you know uh-huh. that men's opinions matter more than women's opinions, man. Did he seriously did, say that? Did I say you that? You did. You were like, you said something about. I think that men's might have been one of those things women. that sometimes people hear. And I said people there carefully. Uh, <laughs> sometimes people hear things that you, hear you say things that you didn't say, that, but they hear them in their imagination and they hold you accountable for having imagined hearing you say this. You know, oh have you boy. ever had a girl? Have you ever had a girl wake up in the morning next to a beautiful girl? You look over and she's like, "I hate you." <laughs> well, no. What the hell did I do? Well, I had a dream you had an affair. What the? F- Are you serious? You had a dream that I had an affair, and you're mad at me, knowing that, it was a dream. Before. Yeah, but like, I've been happens. I've been punished for I, my part. Like, if, my I haven't first, woken like, up next to that many men, before. so I can't say if that only Rich. happens on one side of the Rich. gender or not. One of my one of my partners, like way back, told me that one of his girlfriends had a dream where he cheated on her, and she woke up and punched him. <laughs> <laughs> I've I've had that experience. I've I've I had like, that happen to women. me. <laughs> and I have never awakened and punched a girlfriend for any any reason or and and I think it would be held against me if I did. I think it would and I'm glad that's not the case. I have never punched a girlfriend under any circumstance. Good. That's, that's, <laughs> no, no, that's good she to hear. she punched him for thinking that because she had a dream that he cheated. Yeah. But imagine if it was reversed. Jesus, God, that'd make like national headlines. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I, I was like, why do you date such violent people? Yeah, I, <laughs> I was in jail with a guy who his girl stabbed him on three separate occasions, and he was still with her. And it's like, I'm like, so I got to ask you, bro, the stabbing doesn't bother you? It maybe would bother he, me, I may, feel. Maybe he's just really kinky and like being stabbed every now and then. 
he seemed pretty clear that he wasn't liking the stabbing. But I don't know if that's a kink. Back. I apologize if I apologize. No, if there I are people the out community. there. There was actually a girl in uh, in Keene who approached me, and she was saying, "Yeah, I'm a, I'm a masochist, and and I like knives." And I was like, you know, if if if, if you want a spanking, I'll throw you over my knee. I don't give a fuck, but I'm not going to draw blood. That's just not something I can do for you, sweetheart. You can only violate the nap so I much. I was so sorry, too, because she was cute as a button, but I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to, my mouth to end, to write a check that my ass couldn't cover, so I let that slide. That that being said, you can find I me at vrebel.com, and you can also find this show at rebelloveshow.com. And also, please go subscribe to our our podcast, iTunes, Stitcher, and uh, actually go on this YouTube channel and watch this re- youtube.com slash rebelloveshow, and you can see this interaction with uh, Lauren and Rich and myself and Andrew here. I'm sorry, sorry dude. I apologize. Oh, God. What did you like call me? The state of speech. I'm sorry, man. Are I you? was saying your status name. I apologize. <laughs> Please forgive me. I'll tip you I'll tip you some Bitcoin. Yeah, more than 0.3. Go oh, on. More, no. <laughs> yeah, that's, o- o- only, some, uh, only some people in this community get 0.3 Bitcoin. <laughs> you have to have female parts. I know. Apparently, I need to. Help, help me get female parts to donate Bitcoin to me. <laughs> All right. Anyways, kids. Wait, you're, oh, God. You're trying to get female parts. Senti- parts of female sent to you? No, yeah, no. no. Why are you trying to get parts of female sent to you? Jesus, dude. He, he wants, you can't do this. He wants no, Bitcoin. This violates the nap unless these people have been parted out consensually. No, Rich, he wants Bitcoin so that he can get lady parts. He wants to go, like, have surgery. Really? Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it was an insight. It was a joke that we had that Lauren gets attention just because she's a female. You said you said send me well, Bitcoin so I can get lady no, parts. No, Lauren doesn't. Lauren doesn't yeah. get attention you said just are, because she's female. Oh, I don't get me wrong. I know that. Lauren but we were gets joking attention with each other about because it. she's female and a. Adorable. I mean, look oh, at her. Is How can she not get look, attention? Look, all, no, 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 All of us no, at this no, table no, are no, fucking no, no, crazy. No, 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 all right, and no, she's ta- definitely no. crazy, but she's an adorable crazy. Look. Oh, she. Oh, is. she is. She's, she's one of my crazy. favorite. She's one of my favorite nuts in the ball. <laughs> okay, look. It's, it's important <laughs> that I point out here to you men that I don't just get attention because I have female parts or because I'm adorable. Thank you for saying I'm adorable, but I am smart as a whip. And I create videos that inform people about important things having to do with liberty in their oh, life. I'm not saying, no, you absolutely are. You're, you're correct. You definitely you're are intelligent. Right. And I hope we didn't minimize that because it is true. Let me say that. That doesn't my negate the fact that you're adorable. Was to say that you get a you get more attention looking as you do, which is scrumptious, than you would get. If you were less scrumptious, <laughs> and you know the 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 scrumptious level does affect the libertarian man, he says, "Oh my God, look okay, at I'm this, blushing. look at this great <laughs> beauty here upon the uh, upon the video screen," and I bad. take her seriously because, oh my God, <laughs> and but the thing is, that's just a hook. And you have to be able to follow that up with actually telling them something that they need to hear and that they're going to value in your later life. And that's how you keep listeners. And you do keep listeners. So, you know, that's not Thank all there. Thank you. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> and you can also find us on Facebook.com slash Rebel Love Show. And kids, with that, we are out. So, uh, peace. peace. Love peace. and anarchy. show and kids with that we are out so uh peace, peace. love peace. and anarchy <laughs> keen.com so anyways there's been a lot that's happened free there's do- uh, oh, free keen.com convention um there is uh the elections i wouldn't mind talking about the free stairs getting in um and then getting the new movers <laughs> party yeah they got it in some of them did are we yeah, on the air? As yeah. Democrats. I can't believe you just said that. I've never heard you use the phrase getting it in. We haven't. We're not. Oh, yes!
<laughs> that will be a recurring character, I'm sure. Or Ash? <laughs> Can we get Ash high uh, on no. the show? No. Why not? Because she doesn't like the smoke. How do you know? Uh, I just know. You tried it? See, what I do is I'll blow it in their ear once, and then when they see me smoking, if they like it, they'll come up and want me to blow it in their ear again. And if they don't like it, they they won't come around when I'm no, smoking. I've never, so. I've never really tried to be honest. Yeah, try well, I've tried it a once. couple times, but she, she sees smoke and just goes running. Well, oh. then she probably doesn't like it. She doesn't yeah. like it then. Ash just told me she voted for James Cleveland. No shit. Yeah. She was like, YOLO swag, 420, please it. <laughs> please okay. it. All right, so uh, let's just get this show on the road. Okay, kids? Let's rock. <laughs> All right. So are there I cameras? Rock. Are, are you still asking this question? Oh, wait, you said there weren't. Never mind. I didn't say there weren't. Well, maybe I did oh, say there weren't. Okay, Lynn, I I just to told you. I said, just I, act I as if you are on camera. Well, then, okay. Is that, that's your camera pose? What's your audio pose? I'm pretty. <laughs> <laughs> audio pose? No shit, Sherlock. What's your next clue? Uh, audio okay. pose? There you go. No, we're not doing that. I'm going to look can, nice. Can I, start the, can I start my show? Is that cool? Is that is that is that okay with you? Is that fine? Is that cool? I love you. I love you too, but can I start the show? Fuck you. Okay, thank you. See, I'd just go live to Spider. Oh, I've already been recording the last 10 minutes. <laughs> okay, great. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> we can offer I, I that as a, a bonus I need a, feature. I need a point where I can actually cut and like actually start. You put the headphones on and start recording. <laughs> you see that face? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Don't worry. I mean, it might be bonus content, but Shire, it's not going to be at the you're show. You're still free tonight, right? Um. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh damn, that didn't take long. <laughs> <laughs> Record. Let's do the right, show. Right, let's, let's do go. the show. Okay. I thought we were already recording. No, well, we are, but I gotta start it with like an intro and whatnot. Oh like, my god, my, are we still having this discussion? Maybe. Go. Otherwise, the audience will freak out. They'll be like, "I don't, I don't know where they everything know is what's going on." Quick, somebody oh my god, a let's have a show. show. What do I usually it's do with format. my ears? I don't know. Okay. Peter. <laughs> I'll come, Peter. I'll come Peter. <laughs> All right, that's bonus content. Definitely. Yeah, definitely bonus <laughs> content. All right. Um, 